Hello everybody and welcome to another expanded guide. Today I am here all by myself to talk to you about Daniela Reyes. Travis has gone to Yugath. He'll be back eventually, but I'm here to talk about Daniela still all on my own. Daniela is the next Edge of the Earth investigator, which means that she is going to follow the Edge of the Earth deck building, which is shorthand of an investigator in one class that transforms into another. Daniela goes from Guardian to Survivor. Let's get to Daniela's abilities first. So she has a great stat line. You can see that in the strengths just below me over here. Uh, four brain, one book, five fist, and two foot. The four brain and five fist means that whew, she's going to defend herself against brain checks, which deal horror, which she has less of. And she's going to fight really well with five fist. Very nice for that. Her ability is also very good. That's the other strength below me, Tesla's damage and evasion. As a reaction, after an enemy attacks you, except an attack of opportunity you provoke, that's very important to know, You uh, even if that attack was cancelled, you either deal one damage to that enemy or automatically evade it. This means that if you play a card like, for example, the Mechanics Wrench or some of the other cards that we're going to have here, and it allows you to have an enemy attack you, you get to deal damage to that enemy or automatically evade it. It's very nice. Of course, this means that you are going to have to have a plan for where this damage is going, right? You're going to need to have some soak in this deck, and we're going to see this as the cards go. There's the very traditional survivor build that Daniela can do where she gets a charisma, she gets Jessica Hyde and Pete Sylvester in play, and then she can never die. But there's also some other options as well that are really nice in Daniela. Her Elder Sound effect is plus one. If you were attacked by an enemy this round, you automatically succeed instead. While nice, certainly not something we're looking at using Daniela for aiming for getting that Elder Sign. Deck size is 30, Guardians level 0, Survivor 1 to 5, Neutral 0 to 5, and up to 5 other Survivor level 0 cards. This means that you are going to have to be picky and choosy about your 5 level 0 Survivor cards, because... Oh boy, are there a lot of really good Survivor cards at level 0. <laughs> uh, signatures is the Mechanics Wrench. This is a 2-cost asset that takes up a hand slot. Uh, it's very good. It's a very good card. You're going to want to find it. You can exhaust it to choose an enemy or location that enemy attacks you. Which is a good thing. And then as an action, fight uses ability only against an enemy that has attacked you since the end of your last turn. And you get plus two fists for this attack to deal plus one damage for this attack. So notably, the line of text until since the end of your last turn. This means that you get to fight against enemies in the, who have attacked you in the previous enemy phase with this. Her signature weakness is mob goons. Um, Hunter, uh, Diana Reyes only, which means other players don't need to worry about it. This enemy's attacks cannot be cancelled. And damage or horror dealt by this enemy's attack is treated as direct. So, really this is going to most likely end up being just a two damage, like a two action kill, right? Two damage attack, two damage attack, it's dead. You also can use her, uh, Danielle's ability, of course, to deal with the mob goons. However, with that said, um, it is direct damage and horror, so you just need to be more aware of that. That's not what your soak is going to help you for. Daniela is a very fun and a very powerful investigator, but you have to sometimes take some risks with her and her playstyle in order to come out on top. Uh, you're going to need to get hit more than you're wanting to get hit, and you're going to need to know when you don't want to get hit. And in that case as well, you're going to need to know when you do want to get hit to save tempo that you can make up for playing your soak. This is something that will make more sense as you play Daniela more. I've had lots of success with Daniela. Why don't we dive in and start looking at some cards, starting with the core set. All right. So if you see a little button on the card that says, like, weapon or the elder sign, that means down in the description you can find a link to the staples where or the weapon video uh, where we talk about those cards in greater detail. 45 automatic and the machete are the two tagged weapons here. They fight. Uh, guardian cards at level 0, you have no limit to the amount you use, and there's a lot of good guardian level 0 cards that you can take advantage of, uh, and the machete and the 45 automatic are two examples of that. Beat Cop uh, does a lot of things. Number one, he soaks. Number two, he gives us uh, a plus one fist, and he also can deal damage to an enemy at your location if you are done soaking with him and you want to play another ally. Like, say, maybe example, your guard dog. Guard dog is very nice in Daniela Reyes because Daniela wants to get attacked. And Guard Dog, when Guard Dog is attacked, 
you get to basically deal two damage to the enemy, right? One damage if the damage goes to Guard Dog, which it should, most likely. And then one damage from Daniela's ability. Guard Dog is a very nice ally in Daniela Reyes. And I'm pretty sure Travis put Trusted in here. <clears throat> but Trusted is another card that works really well with Guard Dog. Another good card in Daniela is Dodge. Uh, when an enemy had, uh, uh, attacks an investigator location, you get to cancel that attack. Again, um, Daniela's ability, if we just go back a slide, we can see here. Uh, it Even if that attack was canceled, her ability triggers. So Dodge basically says, hey, I'm not going to get attacked, but I'm still going to use my ability. Very nice card. Vicious Blow is a damage staple, just more damage. Lucky is just a great staple. It can be a level 0 card. It also can be one of your higher upgrade cards if you have the higher upgraded versions of Lucky. But a level 0 Lucky will do good in Daniela no matter what. Emergency Cash, just some money. Guts, to help you in the Mythos phase. Guts is good. Guts is good. Uh, some more staples. We have Overpower and Unexpected Courage. Overpower gives you Fist. Unexpected helps you where you need to be. Uh, it just doesn't replace itself like Overpower and Guts does. A few other cards here. Close Call. Uh, after non weakness uh, non elite enemy location is evaded, shuffle that enemy to the encounter deck. Uh, you can evade with your ability. If we go back again, we're just going to go back over here. Uh, you can automatically evade it. Wow, look at that. You get to shuffle back into the encounter deck. Uh, we have Lucky. The upgraded version is another staple. Will to Survive allows you to perform. Uh, you play it at the start of your turn, most likely where you want to play it before you take any other actions. And then you, until the end of your turn, you don't reveal chaos tokens. Chef's Kiss. Aquina. When enemy attacks you, you can exhaust and deal one horror to her. Deal that enemy's damage to another enemy at your location. You still take horror by the attack. But Aquina, if she has a home, and she doesn't have a lot of homes because her tagline of the Forgotten Daughter is very apt. But what Aquina does is it allow it, 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 she has a good home in Daniela because it allows you to once again just kind of like negate damage. Especially if the enemies don't deal horror and they just deal damage. Aquina does a great job of using uh Daniela's ability to your advantage to further put damage and even more damage. It's a very nice, it's a very nice time. Elder Sign Amulet and Bulletproof Vest are just more soak. Elder Sign Amulet for the necklace slot, which isn't too contested. There are going to be things that you're going to want to put in there, but it's not too bad, actually. It's not too competitive. And the Bulletproof Vest is for the body slot, which is also not too competitive. You probably will only want backpacks that are like the big thing. There might be more that we'll get into later in this list. But if you have a small collection and you're looking for soak and you have the experience, these aren't awful options. All right, on to Dunwich. So, first we got Taunt. Play only during your turn. Engage any number of enemies at your location. Hey, don't spend your time engaging enemies. Bring those enemies to you yourself. One nice thing about Daniela's Wrench, just to keep in mind, is that the Lightning Bolt, where an enemy attacks you, you don't need to be engaged with them. So, you can actually use that to have the enemy be evaded. And then the person who was holding the enemy is now free to do their own thing. It's very nice. Fire Axe is another weapon. You just need to be aware that you will have to spend money to do your attack. However, a nice thing that's notable about Fire Axe is that, let's say, for example, you have a Beat Cop in play. And you have Six Fist as Daniela Reyes. This allows you to just attack at six with Fire Axe. And if your resource pool is empty because you're playing cards, you're still dealing the extra damage. So it's a very good possible way to go. And as you can see in the bottom left, just over there, there's also Dark Horse which also is works very well with Fire Axe and also can kind of do this thing and be a Dark Horse um, Diana, uh, sorry, uh, Daniela build. The only thing we need to be aware of is that this is going to take uh, probably four of your five level zero slots in your Survivor. So just to be aware of that, you definitely could do the build, but it's just something that you need to be like conscious for. Okay, Emergency Aid. Just heal two from an Investigator and Ally Ask you control. This is uh, good in Daniela right? If you don't have a lot of soak or other healing that's like more efficient, this is not awful. This is not awful. It'll keep you alive, which is what's important. Prepared for the worst can help you find weapons. Notably, your wrench uh, is not a weapon. If it bleeds, after you defeat a monster enemy, you heal horror equal to that enemy's horror value. It could work. It could work here. Pete Sylvester is another staple, just as this is the thing I talked about earlier, where with Daniela, you can have... Um, you can have Pete and Jessica on play and just never die. And Pete is part of that. Flare can help you find ally assets or just deal a crap ton of damage and it just exiles. 
But you get to attack at 8 with it, which is really good. That's a really good number, and it deals 3 damage. Then we got Moment of Respite, which is only if there's no enemies. Heal through Horror and draw a card. Healing. You know? If you don't have as much Soak, you can play Moment of Respite. Uh, a few more from Dunwich. We got the Relic Hunter and the Charisma, which gives you an accessory slot and an ally slot. They're just staples. Upgraded Aquina. Uh, so you deal that enemy's damage to any enemy at your location instead of just the enemy that it was attacking, I believe. Very nice upgrade. Same, we're kind of copy-paste what I said about Aquina earlier. And then we have Scrapper, which allows you to get more Fist or more Foot if you need to protect yourself in the Mythos phase. Okay. All right, we are into Carcosa. We have the 32 Colt. It's a weapon in our Staples video. Uh, Daniela is another one that can actually use it because she does have five printed fists. The thing about the 32 Colt is that you need to have like a high fist value to be able to make it work because it does not give you a fist boost. True Grit is Soak. Let me handle this. You can grab cards, enemies from other people, and you have really good stats for the Mythos phase or fighting enemies, so it's very helpful. Resourceful, while it may seem strange to spend your level 0 survivor slots on Resourceful. This actually scales with your deck very well as the game goes on, right? Because in um, at level 0, you have your three other survivor cards that you can grab. But by scenario 8, you have all of your experience cards that you can grab. So Resourceful just improves over time in your deck. And while it might be strange to put it in at level 0, you definitely could. You also could, uh, for example, if you have the level 0 luckies in your deck, upgrade those into... Uh, actually, no, never mind. Never mind. Scratch what I said. You put, Just put this in at level 0. Just put this in at level 0. Heroic Rescue. Uh, when a non-elite enemy would attack another investigator, you engage that enemy and resolve its attack against you, then deal it one damage. Hey, does that just say deal two damage to an enemy? Yes, it does. <laughs> Cherish Keepsake is some nice soak uh, for the a horror and takes up the accessory slot. Not too competitive, as I said about the um, Elder Sign amulet. Madame LeBranche is a very nice ally that soaks for two and two for two, which is a really good rate. The old two, 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 we call it in the biz. She also can give you resources or cards if you ever run out of them. Calling in Favors is a really nice card in Daniela Reyes because it allows you to heal your ally assets, essentially, right? Because you get to return an ally asset to your hand, search for another ally asset, and then play it, reducing its cost. I've actually never done this in Daniela, but it seems like a great line, and you should definitely give it a shot if you have it and you're playing a lot of allies, if you're very an ally-rich Daniela deck. Uh, Inspiring Presence. Uh, if it's successful, ready an ally asset and heal a damage or horror from it. Hey, guard dog, baby, you ready to bite another guy? Because I'm going to inspire you to do such a thing. Very nice. Uh, whew, there's a lot of Carcosa cards, aren't there? Uh, I mean, four of them are the same here. Four of them are the same. Not without a fight. It gets more icons if, uh, you are committed, uh, for... If you're engaged with an enemy... And you can only commit it to skill test if you are engaged with an enemy, which is likely where you're going to be wanting using your fist and foot, most likely. Uh, so if you're with an enemy, this is basically just like uh, overpower or uh, manual decks or a guts, even. We have the three, the four desperate skills, sorry, which give you four icons, but you can only play if you have three or fewer remaining sanity. Notably, Daniela starts with six, so you'll probably get to three pretty quick. And, uh, you know, you gotta just respect any time you can find a, an expanded guy where Travis was able to put these in. We have a Test of Will. Uh, this cancels Revelation effects on Treachery cards. So this is just Mythos Phase Protection. It exiles itself, but it's also, like, very cheap, right? And also it can help other investigators to also make up for the fact that it exiles. Very nice card. Chance Encounter allows you to play ally assets from your discard pile. You just play, pay the cost. This is like another version of your guard dog or another version of your, um, you know, your Aquina, right? Like there's just more versions of the allies that are in your deck and it's a nice include. In fighting, you get to cancel all attacks made by non-elite enemies against you this phase and you get to play it after the enemy phase begins. While it is very expensive, this does allow you to just like deal a bunch of damage to enemies engaged with you when they attack you. You can just like flare them all over and then just tsa, 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 just punch them all back. Is Danielle's ability once per turn? I don't even know. No, you can do as much as you want. That seems sick. I also noticed that I did not say one of her weaknesses, which is the awkward card pool. 
what that means is that it's like um it's edge of the earth <laughs> there's a lot of great guardian cards that she can't play and it's a little bit sad last card here in path carcosa's key of yeast card is just good All right, on to the Forgotten Age. Survival Knife is our starting weapon here. Just you can see us talk about it more. One thing to note is that this card actually deals uh, a good chunk of extra damage because of Daniela's ability. Trusted is very nice on ally assets. Just make your guard dog have more health and sanity. Really nice card in Daniela. Scene of the Crime allows Daniela to get clues when she's engaged with enemies for her first action. Very nice card as well. And Perseverance, it's a guts worst case scenario, but it also can stop you from dying. Which is kind of, in a way, another form of soak. And I think it's like a really nice option for your level 0 cards because it also has two wild, uh, sorry, two brain icons on them. Uh, I, I definitely would consider this as a level 0 Daniela card, no doubt. We got Second Wind. You can only play it as your first action because it's bold. And uh, it heals a damage or two if you drew a treachery card, then it replaces itself. This is nice healing. This is really nice healing. As the goon, um, the turn where you will have the time to play this is conveniently the turn where you drew a treachery card that is not an enemy you need to kill. Very nice. Take the initiative is a staple. Stunning blow. Uh, just great. You get a, uh, when you're attacking an enemy and you evade it, and if you hit them, you get to evade it. Seems good. Seems good. Take heart is a way to get more economy. Uh, you know, if you fail, you can draw cards and gain resources. Luckily, with your low-ass book, you'll be able to just throw this into an investigation challenge and get out ahead. Really nice. And then we got Yaddle. Yaddle's a bit fun, where he can commit the icons on the top card of the card in your, um, discard pile, as long as they're not wild. And you can also discard the top card of your deck if one doesn't fit. Uh, you can do that once per phase. It's been errata to be more than once per turn. If you have the newer copy of the Forgotten Age, which I have right here, uh, Yaddle is actually... Well, it's not this one. It's the Investigator expansion. My apologies. Yaddle's errata is actually printed on the card. Whew. Forgotten Age. We're just blurring through this one. Old Hunting Rifle. This is a fun weapon where it has ammo, takes up two hands, but it gives you plus three and deals plus two damage. Hey, that sounds a lot like Flare, doesn't it? But you only have to pay three and you get to fire it three times. However, if you reveal a skull or an auto fail, the rifle jams, which is, uh, you have to unjam it as an action, right? But it's just something to be aware of. Luckily, Daniela could just like punch her way through. Like if the rifle jams, she can just poof, 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 or just get punched and then deal damage back. Time Warm Brand, this sh I'm pretty sure this should have the weapon tag on it. It just allows you to fight, and you can also add your brain to deal plus three damage for one attack. If it deletes an elite enemy, you draw three cards. Good card. Five experience, five cost. It's expensive, but it's good. And then we got Alter Fate, which is just uh, allows you to remove a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. Uh, it's fast. It's very good. It's it's one of the things that's like quiet until you're like quietly good until you're like suddenly you hear the scream in the back of your mind that's saying. I wish I had an Alter Fate here. Alright, on to the Circle Undone. We have Delay the Inevitable, which is uh, just another way to prevent damage. The nice thing about this in Daniela Reyes is that you know when you're going to want to play this. Because, like, for example, you're engaged with an enemy and you know it's going to attack you in the enemy phase. And that's the window in which you want to kill it. Delay the Inevitable works really well because you can just, you know, play it, get attacked, cancel the damage and or horror, and then also just kill the enemy. Really nice card in, uh, in Daniela Reyes. Did I call it Diana Stanley? I feel like I did. I feel like I might have. We got Steadfast, which is just a super guts or a super overpower, depending on how much total health and sanity you have. This is something that you're probably going to throw out pretty quick because Daniela's, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, Daniela's, uh, numbers will go down quicker than expected. Something worth fighting for is Horror Soak. Me Cleaver allows you to fight and you deal additional damage if, uh, you, you know, have three, you deal additional damage if you take a Horror when you initiate the ability. If you defeat an enemy, you heal a Horror and you also get more Fist Boost if you have three or fewer remaining Sanity. So, like... A lot of different, like, knobs that you can twist with this knife. Uh, well, this cleaver, rather. Depending on how you want to take and approach fighting with it. I think it's a nice option that you can definitely use in uh, Daniela to great effect. 
45 Thompson we talk about in the staples. Drawing thin, you can increase the test, uh, the difficulty of test to gain resources to draw cards. Just a very powerful card. It's it's pretty damn powerful. <laughs> uh, and then we got Hollow Mirror. This is probably the biggest competitive piece that you're going to have for your accessory slot if you want to run it. Notably, you only run one, which is actually kind of nice because it's kind of like the sixth card for your weird five survivor spots because you usually always will need to run at least one one of with this kind of deck building. And Hallowed Mirror allows you to uh, do that. Uh, as you're one of, because you can only have one in your deck. But it comes with uh, three copies of these Soothing Melodies, which one will go into your hand, two will go into your deck when you play it. And they heal uh, two damage or two horror, or any combination thereof, from among investigators and or allies, and then you draw a card. Very nice. If there is one accessory slot that I would, like, most commonly run in Daniela, it's probably this one. But, I mean, like, I don't think there's... The nice thing about Daniela is... I don't think there's, like, a wrong choice if you're just trying to build around her ability and having, like, survival pieces for it. Uh, then we got Interrogate, where you can uh, use your fist to get clues from an enemy. You just basically, hey, what are you doing here? And it gets you it gets you clues. Last two cards from Circle Undone is we have some upgraded survivor cards. This is notably the other weakness for Daniela that you saw at the beginning of the video, is that the upgraded survival pool is not, like, the best. Daniela can use a lot of great tools from it, but it's just something to be aware of with the Investigator just because of the Survivor card pool. Five of Pentacles gives more health and sanity, which is not nothing. It's definitely not nothing. Let's you soak more, right? You get another user out of your ability for this one card. That's nice. And then we got the upgraded Tennessee Sour Mash, which is uh, you can fight. If it succeeds against a non-elite enemy, you can automatically evade it. It also can give you three plus twos on uh, a treachery card. Plus two brain. Very nice. All right, where did I go? Why am I gone? How have I just... Oh, I went to a different page. That's what happened there. I'm like, what's going on? Where we go? Here. There we go. I'm here now. <laughs> I am here. Do not adjust your television set. Justin did disappear for a second. Solemn Vow. You can soak for other people. While you're going to be wanting to use Daniela's ability as much as you can, you're also a survivor, Guardian. Which means you have a lot of healing and soak. So you can definitely build like a tanky soak uh daniela reyes this works really well as well with um peter sylvester and jessica hyde because they heal at the end of each turn horror and damage you can actually see jessica hyde in the middle bottom of this page um and that just keeps them alive and keeps your allies alive because they can move that over to jessica and pete first watch you get to draw and counter cards deal them out as you see fit no more than one can be dealt to other players but you can take <laughs> as many as you want uh, just good. It's like encounter deck mitigation. Always a nice choice. Daring, uh, if you're going to be attacking or invading, attacking, you get a draw card after it ends, you get plus three. Sure, the enemy gets retaliate, but honestly, that's kind of okay. Because Daniela likes getting punched in the face by ghouls. Tetsuo is a great option for Daniela Reyes. Helps you find your items. Helps you find your wrench. Helps you find your weapons. Helps you find your hallowed mirror. Helps you find a lot of juicy things. And uh, also is soaking for you in the process. Very nice tool for Daniela Reyes. 35 Winchester is another weapon that you can use if you want to, if you're feeling a little bit spicy. Uh, Scrounge for Supplies is a staple. Uh, notably, this can get back your level 0 Guardian cards, which are probably, if they're going to make it longer in your deck, are really nice. Uh, Scrounge for Supplies works very well for off-class cards. Jessica High, we've been talking about her for a while. Plus one fist, and she heals damage at the end of each turn. Wow. That's really nice in Daniela. Brute Force uh, is also really nice in Daniela. Uh, you just get to attack at 8. And if you succeed by 2 or more, you deal plus 2 damage. Yes, please. Nothing left to lose. You have... If you have... You basically draw up to 5 cards, gain up to 5 resources, uh, and whatever you have fewer, and then you move it from the game. It basically lets you just go back to the start of the game in terms of hand size and resources. Really nice card as well. And then I think our last... Oh, and I have a few, few more whew, in Dream Eaters. We got Miss Doyle. Uh, Miss Doyle kind of runs this the same thing. She she comes into play. You choose one of them at random of her little creature dreamlands, Hope, Zeal, or Augur, to put into play randomly. And the rest get shuffled into your deck. And they all work the same. Um, they're all fast. They all cost one. Uh, and they all let you to either evade a fight or investigate with a base value of five. 
You may exhaust them to just do it. You may discard them uh, to automatically succeed instead. Then, uh, if, you su if you discard them and you automatically succeed, you may put one of the other ones into play from your discard pile by shuffling the cat that you just discarded into your deck. Nice cards. Uh, I mean, being able to, like, evade or fight... Sorry, evade or investigate if needed. And then just, like, also using... Um, zeal to like get a hit when you want to like ne don't don't underestimate the power of an automatic success in any effect it's always good nightmare bob is a staple and the black hat is like a super soaker <laughs> uh the black hat soaks until i don't know it, it soaks a long time it makes two of the four two of the th four bad tokens like pretty very manageable considering there just becomes minus ones and then it turns your elder sign into something that's like actually legitimately good not that daniella's is bad but like if daniella's said hey uh plus five plus one and heal a damage or a horror that would be so much nicer than what she has printed on her again not that was printed on her was bad it just could be better all right into insmith uh, for full detail of the Bless and Curse cards, check the description in the video for the link to the relevant archetype guide. Notably, uh, Daniela runs a, can run a really good... She has Bless. She can run Bless very well. She has the two Bless pools, and she can really take advantage of the Survivor Bless cards. While she doesn't get, like, the Guardian Bless cards at the higher levels, she can still do a lot with what she's given. Uh, the Spirit of Humanity uh, is a notable callout. Just really good for her. It's very good for her. Riot Whistle, these are some other notable cards from Innsmouth, uh, lets you to take an additional action, which you can only use to engage. This is another good spot for the accessory slot. And while I said that there was not much competition, doesn't mean there was no competition. But it really means that, like, none of these are, like, a must put into your accessory slot, right? Like, it's kind of, once again, to the build that you want to do. Butterfly Effect allows a player doing a test um, to put a card in or take a card out when a symbol with a chaos token with a symbol is revealed uh just some nice encounter like some skill test mitigation some protection same with uh third times a char you basically get like two re-rolls of the chaos token that you draw and then we have unrelenting which while not as busted into daniela still card draw for a test that you're going to pass is hard to say no to it's like it's like a it's like a take heart that doesn't give you resources but allows you to pass the test in exchange for those resources all right on to edge of the earth which is daniela's cycle so there are some nice cards here toe to toe with fight it deals plus one damage and it's automatically successful which means you can still commit cards to it like a vicious blow to deal even more damage and as additional cost to perform the attack the chosen enemy must make it makes an attack against you <laughs> who cares that's what daniela is here for uh get behind me is also a very good daniela card uh is a play during a lightning bolt window whenever an enemy would attack another investigator location it attacks you instead then engages you cancel one horror dealt by each attack made this way because this has a lightning bolt window you can actually use it in the enemy phase which means that if for example say a hunter with like prey only or prey moves into someone else they take it you don't need to spend actions jumping in front of them and like you know like going into that location with the enemy and fighting the enemy you can just say hey nah get behind me i got it geared up lets you play all your items reducing the cost by one for your first turn but you have three fewer actions if you're gonna put a lot of items in your deck i'd consider this bandages is an incredible card for daniela reyes it's also just generally incredible but it's uh when you would take damage or an ally would take damage you can spend a supply they heal one damage there's three supplies if there's no damage on it you discard it very nice sledgehammer is another weapon tool this should have a weapon tag uh notably the other one also should have a weapon tag you can see it uh, farther to the right you basically just get a punch really high at two actions you get a punch at seven for one action you get a punch at four and deal plus one damage however the upgraded version you get a plus pu punch at six and deal plus one or for three actions punch at ten and deal plus five Whew, that's a lot of damage heavy furs is soak and it also allows you to redraw on symbol tokens as long as the symbol token is obviously not the auto fail because that would be crazy for a level zero neutral card 
Jury rig allows you to, uh, when you attach it onto an item mass to control by investigator, they can spend charges to get a plus two, which is nice. It's actually a good card. I, I like jury rig. It always, it always impresses me. And then we have fire extinguisher, which is just a really nice weapon with a, a panic evade or a panic super evade if you want to exile it. I think what's really nice about this one, though, is that it's just a really cheap item tool, melee, that you can just attack with endlessly that only takes up one hand slot. So when I play Danielle, a lot of the time, I like to have a fire extinguisher in one hand and my wrench in the other, tink, and I just go to town. More Edge of the Earth cards. We got Bangle of Jinxes, which is, uh, to quote Bryn yesterday, this card might be too good. The card is very good if your deck is built around it. So after an enemy attacks you, you place a charge on it, and you can spend a charge to get plus two skill value for this test whenever you do a test. Limit once per. It comes with one charge, and it basically just adds more and more charges onto it. Yesterday, Bryn had a Relic Hunter and two of the Bengals in play, and my god, it got, it got a bit nutty. Plucky is also a very nice card for um, Daniela. Because most of the time you're not looking at assigning damage to, you know, you. So you have your other soak for it. And in the cases where you do, you kind of have this free soak that gives you plus one brain or plus one book. That you can, you know, potentially even use resources for passing book tests. Whoa! Um, but also just like, you know, more brain and soak for zero and fast. Three experience, yes. But you are a survivor. So if you have a smaller collection, you're probably going to run out of experience relatively quickly of what you need to buy in your card pool as a survivor. Burn after reading. It's kind of nuts. You get to exile zero card, zero to five card in your hand. Discover two clues of your location. If it was a, if the exiled card was two or higher, you remove a doom from the current agenda and then exile burn after reading. So in the last scenario, just burn it all, baby. Like just, there's a lot of times where as a survivor, I just put two copies of this into my deck going into the last scenario. <laughs> like you might as well, right? You might as well, right? Like you, you just, you just might as well. Let me go Dauntless Spirit. This gives you uh, either five brain or four... Uh, sorry, four brain. Nope. Yeah, nope. Five. We're going to go back to the top. This gives you either... Uh, gives you brain equal to your fist or fist equal to your brain. So you either get five brain or four fist. Yeah. Why not, right? And then we have blood. We'll have blood. Uh, play after enemy attacks you. Max one per attack. Damage and a horror from this attack cannot be assigned to ally assets. For each point of damage and a horror you took, draw a card. Obviously, this is a really good plant here for Diana, uh, for Daniela. Uh, I don't want to know how many times I might have called her Diana in this video, but I'm going to wager it was actually a, a high amount. <laughs> um, you also get to deal damage or evade enemies because of this, but it also will draw cards for each damage and our hair you take. So it's a really nice way to like replace cards in your hand. We have the Mementos. These are, uh, they both soak three and three. They both take up the accessory slot. Um, and... They each have, like, the opposite version of their text, either former or future, where it's after you fail a skill test by two or more, heal a damage. If you succeed, heal a horror, or the, excuse me, the inverse of that as well, depending on which one you have. Um, if you're more worried about damage, get the one where you succeed by two to heal the damage, because you're probably going to do that more. If you're more worried about horror, do the opposite. If you're worried about both, buy a Relic Hunter and just do both. <laughs> why not right and then we got earthly serenity which is actually like the especially the level four version is a notable healing spell in daniela reyes because it's a brain zero test which means you're going to be at four which gives both dauntless spirit and plucky more uh power here uh and basically for each point you heal you can spend a dam a charge to heal a damage or a horror from an investigator location good healing last few edge of the earth cards we got unscrupulous loan this is just a way to get 10 money now and if you have fewer than 10 resources, at the end of your, at the end of the game ends, you're eliminated, you exile unscrupulous loan, which might happen, but you're also a survivor, so who cares? Just buy it again if you need it. And then we got Bruiser and Crafty. These are the tricolor talents. They come in with two resources. Those replenish the start of each round. They can be spent to pay or increase the test on um, cards with the three subtypes. So Bruiser is armor, firearm, or melee. For example, the weapons you're going to be fighting with or the armor you're going to be using to protect yourself. Uh, and then crafty is insight tool or trick, which are tools you're going to be using. You're going to be using them. Yeah. So these are if you want to help your economy in that. Bruiser probably would be really good in Daniela Reyes. So I'd give it a shot. All right. On to the return twos. 
We got the upgrade of Rabbit's Foot, which is uh, for each point you fail by, you get to search the top X cards of your deck. So if you fail by three, you get to look at three, draw one. It's not definitely not a necess necess necessity or a necessary thing, but it's if you're planning on failing, which I wouldn't, but you still could, uh, this is a good way of getting cards. The smaller version of Ex uh, Alter Fate is just more expensive and not fast. Otherwise, it's the same. Uh, the upgraded backpack is a staple. You're going to want it in Daniela Reyes because your signature is an item and items are very good. It's a very good item and you're going to want to play it. So I'd consider picking it up for sure. Nine of Rods, which allows you to say no to certain encounter cards, which actually can be a big boon for Daniela Reyes. Of course, you have to shovel back in and draw another card. And there's the chance you might draw the exact same card or the worst card. But most of the time, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Like, the goal is to get rid of the card that's the worst for you and get it for something that's better for you like an enemy nice card and then we got the fool which allows you to just reduce the cost of cards that you're going to play not nothing cheaper cards is always a good thing okay we're in a the final cycle and these videos i will say are tough to do by yourself <laughs> all right we got Flesh Ward. The rule is true. If you are in the art, the card is good for you. So Daniela Reyes is in Flesh Ward. Uh, when you're dealt damage and or horror from an enemy attack, exhaust it, spend a charge, cancel one damage or horror from the attack. Sometimes enemies just deal one and one. Sometimes enemies just deal one. And sometimes you get to spend charges to deal damage to back to enemies when they're not even dealing you a lick of damage. Notably, Flesh Ward also soaks for one and one. Very nice card. Boxing Gloves gives you plus one on fall fighting, and you also get to find spirit events after defeat an enemy. So there's a lot of good spirits, spirits in these cards. We have an upcoming Ashcan Pete Boxing Gloves deck for Bryn's Madhouse, and it actually makes me want to try to build one in um, Daniela, because I think it actually would be good. <laughs> I think it actually would be a, a good deck. Get over here, engages and fights enemies. Uh, you get to, like, save on movement and bring the enemy to you, scorpion style. Stand together is some just great economy. Safeguard, because why do you want to spend your actions moving when you're too busy protecting the Seekers from getting killed? So Safeguard can help you do that. The level zero test of will, uh, it doesn't automatically cancel a treachery. You need to pass a brain three test, so it's just something to be aware of. But you still could, potentially, you have four brain, you can boost it with other things. It's an option. We got the upgraded Cherish Keepsake and Leather Coat, which when they're defeated, they're exiled, but they now soak for four. That's pretty good. Uh, and then we got the upgraded Derringer, which also should have the weapon tag. It's just a really nice weapon that guarantees six damage. Whew! That's a lot of damage. Closing things out here, we have the uh, level two Test of Will, which cancels it all of the time and then you test brain three and if you fail exile test of will the design on the three test of wills is really cool i think it's like a it's like a it's a design win for sure from the designers i think they really knocked it out of the park there uh, and you can kind of choose the flavor that's best for the daniela deck that you have assuming you even want to do encounter deck man uh, manipulation or mitigation rather uh, so i think test of will is a nice option for that and you can choose the flavor that works best for you Level 3 Lucky, it's a staple, it's really good, it's all, it's too good. Very good card. And then we got Chainsaw, which is an awesome weapon to fight with. You get to attack a plus 2, deal plus 2 damage. If it fails, either place a supply on Chainsaw or deal damage to the attacked enemy. Have never played with this card, but I really want to. It seems really good. And then we got Deja Vu, which is like the exile. Uh, it, 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 it's like for the exile archetype. Notably, I think that Daniela is probably one of the best users of Deja Vu. Just because her stat line is so good that you can get away with... Like, her stat line and her ability and her level 0 guardian weapons are going to be good enough that you can get away two scenarios, maybe even three, um, without needing to upgrade your weapons. And you can get, like, the, spend your first seven experience to get, like, these things going into your deck. So I think, notably, that Daniela would be very nice working with Deja Vu. Okay! We did it. We hit the end. Uh, deck here. Let's kind of go through. This is a deck built by Travis. We have uh, our weapons. We have two 45 automatics, two machetes, uh, a survival knife, and the mechanics wrench. So we have six weapons in our deck. Prepared for the worst, which notably finds five of them to help us dig it. Uh, for our soak, we have Flesh Ward, Cherish Keepsake, Guard Dog, Madame LeBranche, Tetsuo Mori. So a lot of soak in this deck to keep us going. Notably, Tetsuo Mori actually also finds our six weapons. 
or alternatively grabs them out of the discard pile if for some reason they end up there. Uh, into more economy, uh, we have Emergency Cash and Stand Together, which are really nice economy. Dom Madame LeBranche also can help with our economy because, you know, she is low rate, but also can give you resources or cards, depending if you're out of them. Notably, no card draw in this deck, but that's okay, because you can, like, pick up cards when you need to as you, like, have downtime. This isn't really a deck that's going to do much in the downtime, so you can use those moments to, like, rep like replenish your supplies as needed. Uh, some other, uh, some Daniela tricks and get behind me and toe to toe. Notably, we have a lot of soak in this deck. Guard Dog, Tetsuo, Madame, Cherish Keepsake, Flesh Ward. That's a lot of soak that you can play these four cards without too much concern. That's like kind of like I, what I am seeing about the upside of this deck is that Travis built a nice Daniela deck that would be great for newer players because you don't need to go so hard or worry about doing other things because your goal right now with this deck is pretty simple. You're going to be killing enemies and you're going to be taking damage or using your events to kill enemies and take damage, which means that you don't have to spend a lot of time doing other stuff. By the time one of your soak is dead, you're going to have another one lined up to come into play. Uh, going into our skills, we have two copies of Guts to help us survive the Mythos phase or help other people in the Mythos phase. Resourceful to get back our Cherished Keepsake and Medomptal Branch or our upgrades as we get into it. Again, Resourceful scales very well with Daniela and then two Vicious Blows for more damage. Okay, that's it. That is it for this expanded guide. Huge thank you. Our next one, I'm pretty sure, is Monterey Jack because he is... No, it actually might be Norman Withers. I think it might be Norman Withers next. Whoo! All right. Well, you know what? Scratch that. I think it's... It might be... It's, I, I might change it to Monterey Jack, though. We're going to see. Huge thank you to everyone who watched this episode. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel. Have a good one. I love you. And as always, a GG's.